Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session. It's one o'clock. I hope you had lunch. If you have not had, maybe you had a late breakfast. Um, we have an interesting session today, um, and I hope you benefit from it. We've been trying our level best to get one of the better speakers for this session, actually. And finally, we were very lucky that we have uh, Joy Teo. Uh, she is actually a certified aromatherapist, and uh, she is also registered with various uh, very renowned international aromatherapy bodies uh, that certify uh, people as um, clinical aromatherapists. So we are fortunate to have Joy, Joy to be with us today to give us her expertise, to share very valuable information with us. Joey has a bachelor's degree in biochemistry from the uh, UKM, and she's a founder of Resin Aromatherapy and Perfumery uh, Academy, which is owned by the Nasochem um, Sindirian Berhad. Yeah, and her topic for today is aromatherapy to improve well-being. Um, and this is basically when we when we communicated with Joey, we wanted to to look at how can we reduce stress and anxiety using essential oils? So without further ado, I welcome Joey Teo. Over to you, Joey Teo. Dan jika-jika siapa nak tanya soalan dalam bahasa Malaysia pun boleh juga, ya? Yeah? Okay, Joey, go ahead. Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me share my slide here first. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining the session. Uh, okay, uh, it is my great pleasure to be here to share to you uh, the topic of aromatherapy to improve well-being. And today our focus will be uh, on reduced stress and anxiety with essential oil. Uh, I'm very grateful to our host and organizer and who has put all this together and I wish this will be an engaging session with you. So let's start. We know that at times we all struggle to find balance between work, family and leisure. And our modern lifestyle is becoming more and more demanding. Uh, worrying and getting anxious about different events become more often, right? And aromatherapy here can help to ease our symptoms. And I always say that aromatherapy is an art and science of using the plant extract to stimulate our brain's positiveness, emotion, response to combat stress and anxiety. Okay, let's go to a very basic questions. Some of you may not may already know what is aromatherapy. Some of you may not know. So what is aromatherapy? I try to put a very simple language, simple definition here. Uh, in the modern days, aromatherapy means uh, using essential oil from plants for improve or maintaining our health and beauty. Okay. Uh, of course, you can hear people say other using than essential oil. Some people also using high, uh, hydrolates. Hydrolates actually is a byproduct when produce uh, essential oil that time, you get these hydrolates. Okay, some people are using the whole plant. Okay, uh, if you look back to the history, uh, aromatherapy history is really based on the use of whole plant for medicine purpose. But of course, using just essential oil comes years later. Okay, and we can trace aromatherapy back about 5,000 years ago. And if you read a lot of stories, then you will know that in ancient Egypt time, uh, in the ancient India time, uh, the use of plant was very important and is part of their life, part of their culture. Okay, so how essential oil works, okay? And you see many reference books on if you see someone that will introduce you aromatherapy, they always talk about these three things. Uh, when we talk about this first part here, mind, uh, we always talk about our sense of smell. Oh, we have different senses, right? We have, our eyes can see, our ear can hear, our tongue taste, our skin feel. Okay, but the sense of smell uh, is more sensitive and immediate compared with our other senses. Okay, uh, the chemical in the sense can trigger our psychology response and effect on our mental state. Let me quote a very layman example. 
if I put something nice food, if you are Penang's food lovers, I put some laksa, I put those uh, roja in front of me, uh, in front of the person that who like the food very much. When you have the smell, there you, you smell the food, you feel very happy and enjoy, right? And you feel that, oh, you are so lucky today that you have can have a good food. But if I ask you to go to a place that is very dirty uh, and very uh, a lot of garbage, very smelly, the immediate reaction, the immediate reaction that you are getting that is like, you feel that oh, it's so disgusting, I don't like it. You know, and, and it won't make you happy, you won't feel happy. Right, so this is the immediate uh, sense that can trigger your psychology response. So in aroma therapies, this theory behind that, uh, with the combine of using aromatic oils, actually it works holistically for your mind, body, and spirit. And this is like uh, often we call it a, a, a sense of well-being, balance everything, and nice smell make you happy, make you less stressed, make you more joyful. Let's see about the body part here. Okay, on the uh, on the body part here, uh, actually some essential oils. Uh, we know essential oils is extract from the plants, uh, and some plants we know that they have therapeutic properties. So sometimes you may hear that certain essential oil uh, has that function of anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, antifungal, antimicrobial. And if let's say you have some condition with this, maybe this as an alternative option that can help. Uh, but of course, if you are talking about cure disease here, uh, so far, uh, I have been re reading so many research papers, there is not enough statistics to show that it can cure certain disease. But of course, as an intervention to use aromatherapy, it has slightly uh, a, a, a therapeutic effect that can clear some symptoms. Okay. And uh, example, some essential oil, especially like those citrus oil, it contain the D-lemonine uh, in the com uh, chemical constitution in the essential oil. And this, uh, some people believe that it helps the uh, healthy functioning of the liver. And if you say that using that uh, clove bud or ginger essential oil or even uh, cinnamon essential oil, uh, it can help to boost our immunity. But again, that it won't cure any disease. It just as a complementary usage, okay? And of course, uh, if let's say, especially for female, uh, sometimes we have experienced that imbalanced hormone, uh, such as like uh, irregular menstrual cycle, uh, uh, menopause, uh, the flora essential oil, some can help to balance up our body. So it actually help you to relieve with some symptoms like PMS symptoms, headaches, you know, migraine, uh, or, or maybe that you feel agitated, you know, this can help you to calm down your emotion and cool, suit your body. When we talk about spirit here, uh, aromatherapy has been thousand years used in ancient Egypt to enhance spiritual attainment. Uh, we also know that they use in traditional ceremonies uh, and also you in meditation. Uh, in some practice, they use to support prayers uh, and enhance the mindful practice uh, and energy. Some people will say the energy, chi, or so-called that the chakra, balancing the chakra energy by using essential oil. When they do meditation, uh, when you diffuse essential oil, it actually helps. Uh, you can balance up your spirit, uh, mind, body, and spirit. Okay. Let's go into the topic that we, where we want to focus today. What is anxiety? But you can read from the slide here, very uh, simple explanation. Uh, anxiety is a kind of fearful expectation about your future that comes from a turbulent inner mind that worried and imagine what might go wrong. I guess everybody at any stage of life experienced that. Okay, And sometimes physical symptoms, we can feel the heart palpitation very fast. And those severe one for long term one, they may experience hair loss, and some uh, experience insomnia. They can't sleep, uh, or body aches, uh, muscle pain without any reason. They never go for exercise or do any heavy works, but they feel body aches and pain. Uh, irritable bowel uh, or OCDs. Uh, they, they must put things in organized. They can't have any stain of dirty. You know everything must be perfect. Uh, loss of appetite restlessness or 
uh, the most common one is inability to focus. And we know if this periodically or uh, having that kind of worried of uh, worry or anxiety actually is normal, right? Our life, so many things to do, so many things to take care, right? So periodic is okay. But if let's say it's continuing, uh, continue and worrying you at that point that already interfere your daily lives, uh, then it is not normal, okay? So what is stress, okay? Stress, we always talk about there is a good stress and a bad stress, okay? Uh, sometimes good stress can help you to grow and reach new potential for oneself, whether physically or psychologically, okay? Uh, but if let's say it's the same thing, same like anxiety, if ongoing and long-term stress, uh, it can have damaging effect. Some stress slowly, it will turn to a bad anxiety situation uh, and some will lead to other complications like strokes, ulcer, heart attack, depression and nervous disorder. Okay, let's see some uh, facts and uh, some figures. Uh, the first chart here actually is from US survey, it's quite latest data. Uh, even like the situation here nowadays at the pandemic case, you know, uh, the COVID case, the number never gone down, right? Every day is new break, break records. And this pandemic has caught spike in anxiety and depression. You can see the yellow bar here. The yellow bar here actually is before the pandemic happened. Okay. And uh, the red bar here, uh, okay. The red bar here uh, is the measure during around May time and the December is the year end of last year. You can see number of people suffer anxiety disorder has increased. Number of people have the symptoms of depressive disorder also increase. And uh, if you add up both, you can see it increased almost four times. So this is something that not very healthy. And of course, today that we don't have Malaysia data, uh, and I believe it is will it will show that the same trend. Okay, many people are losing their losing their job, uh, losing their loved one, and some people have financial issue. Uh, they have the family health issue. Uh, then this all contribute to different reason that uh, getting more people having stress and anxiety. Let's look at the another statistic here. Uh, when we look at this, this is taken from Malaysia statistic our Malaysian youth. It is quite sad that to see one in five youth are depressed, two in five are anxious, and one in 10 are stressed. So actually, it is quite bad. And if this thing, we don't address the issue during their adolescent uh, period, and this will extend to their adulthood. And you can then later you can see in a lot of newspapers or in, in any uh, news were saying that many youth actually commit suicide, you know, because they can't handle. So these are the symptoms that maybe that we need to uh, look around your friends or family. Uh, if they have any issue, see whether that we can come in uh, and help. Of course, when we provide help, there are different types of help. Aromatherapy, just one of the intervention uh, approach, uh, complementary approach. And of course, uh, for the other reason, some people experience postnatal depression. Uh, some people uh, met having a menopause period, they also feel uh, emotional anxiety uh, and also upset uh, the cut kind of negative feelings. Uh, and some, they uh, if they have injuries or personal, uh, they have illness, they also feel very stressed. Not only the person illness having the stress, the family members also can experience uh, the stress together. Okay, yeah. and for the change in social uh, cases like change in social responsibility, like people who just retirement, they lost like objective in life. They don't know what to do. The change of lifestyle, you know, for people who divorce, uh, change of responsibility at work, uh, this uh, they will experience. Uh, stress and anxiety too. 
So how essential oil can come into the picture to combat this anxiety and stress? Of course, today that we are not going into the biology class, uh, it looks like very complicated. Uh, what are you going to tell, tell me today, right? But I will try to explain a very, very layman terms, uh, pick few very important one to share with you. Uh, first, uh, you can see from the left hand side here stimulates nerves receptors and how it works and when you take a sedative or calming essential oil or when you sniff when you smell it our researchers believe that this will act as a stimulate receptors in your nose and your nose will direct link to your nervous system and when this go through this complicated path in your body, it will send signal to your brain and your brain will start interpret this smell and it can actually send the message, send alerts to your nervous system and ask you, okay, come, please calm down, okay? This can have a calming effect then can reduce your anxiety and stress symptoms. And how about this chemical reaction? Do you know that some essential oil can have positive effect on the chemical levels in your body? Okay, uh, this is very uh, important when you figure out that your body release chemicals in response of stress and this can trigger your anxiety level to rise. Uh, I'll give you a very exam a simple example. If you go into the jungle, suddenly you see a tiger, what happened? You're very scared, right? You feel stress, right? So your body actually will release stress related chemicals. Why we need these stress chemicals related uh, uh, stress, stress related chemicals in the body? Because it will tell the body to work and find way to survive. It will ask your heart to come faster because you need to run, right? Later, if the tiger chase you, you need to run very fast. So your heart must already pump very fast. Your blood pressure also will increase because when you run, you need a lot of oxygen. So everything function must be very fast and your blood sugar also will increase because you need to run fast, you need energy. But today we are living in urban or, or in your home place. We don't have tiger in our life, but a lot of things that cause us having that kind of stress, like we meet the tiger and we can't really let go this stress. So the, the chemicals in the body keep releasing, telling you that to work harder, the heart pump harder, the prep, blood pressure must keep maintaining uh, uh, keep maintaining uh, enough energy to, to handle all different different challenges in life. So for long run actually is not good for your health. So when you uh, use a certain oils, actually uh, this essential oil can actually regulate the number of stress chemical in your body. So you won't, you won't be secret so much of this stress chemical, then you will be feel more calm and it will reduce your anxious feeling. And when we talk about aromatherapy, we always, always will talk about this limbic system. In general terms, that limbic system is called, means that our emotional brains, okay, it plays a role in the emotional. Uh, let's say example, if let's say during your childhood time, uh, you love the sense of chamomile so much, right? Then this is in your memory in your memory, whenever that you smell the chamomile scent, you feel relaxed, okay? This is how it works. So, and also this limbic system is connected to the other parts of your brain, which also control your hormone, control your blood pressure, your heart rate, your memory, your stress level, your breathing. So when come to essential oil here, uh, actually it will help to promote a balance and well-being when you inhale or you use that topically, uh, for example, for massage, you know, then you feel relaxed and release the stress. So, okay. So what are the some recommendation essential oil? There are plenty, plenty, many types of essential oil in the market from very affordable range to very expensive range. I always tell uh, the user, you may not need necessarily to go for those expensive oil because some affordable oils that actually also can deliver uh, the, the, the outcome that you are looking for. Uh, these 10 essential oil, uh, I'm going to share later uh, one by one, uh, is, is very easy to get. Uh, some slightly expensive, but if you use in blend, 
means that you can mix with few essential oil as one blend, then the cost is not that high. And when we talk about dosage, uh, we always say that dilute it because we are actually by right, we are not supposed to use high concentration essential oil direct on our skin. Uh, it's cost more harmful than giving you the benefit. So when you do uh, dilution, uh, some people will tell you that you must have a high dose of dilution. No, no need. Actually, uh, one to two drops in 5 ml carrier oil is good enough. And you will find it that by this kind of low dose, actually, you already have the very nice scent for you. And when you inhale it or when you use it, it already able that to del deliver the benefits for you. The first one here, uh, we have bergamot oil. Okay, bergamot oil has a warm and friendly inviting scent because it's a citrus oil. Usually citrus oil is very uplifting. Okay, of all the citrus oil, uh, what we have in citrus oil, we have lemon, we have lime, we have sweet orange, uh, we have mandarin, all are these called citrus oil. But out of all, this bergamot uh, is one of the most supportive and comforting oil. Okay, it helps to uplift and brighten the mood and balance even the most extreme emotional state like anxiety, depression, and worry. Okay. Second, we have a chamomile here. In the market, you can find two types of chamomile. Okay. One, we call it Roman chamomile. Another one, we call it German chamomile. In the slide here, I put Roman chamomile. Uh, um, of course, you can explore German chamomile, but I always recommend user, you go and try the scent first. These two, although that they are chamomile essential oil, but the scent profile is very different. Uh, Roman chamomile has the kind of nice apple, fresh apple scent, but German chamomile, uh, most of the people may not like the scent. Imagine if you are in high stress and no matter how many people tell you German chamomile, is, how good is it? Or how, 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 uh, how good that can help you to release the stress. But if you don't like the scent and the moment you smell it, you feel very stressed. You, you may even feel very stressed by having the scent. So usually I will tell the uh, user or patient, you go and try the scent first, pick what you like. And of course, both oil, whether it's German chamomile or Roman chamomile, uh, can use to calm emotional upsets and soothe the nerves and nervous condition, uh, especially like headaches or uh, sleep uh, disturbance. Okay, uh, and you might say, Joey, chamomile is very expensive. Maybe 5 ml is already cost me 160 or 270 ringgit. Some even sell 200 over ringgit. Uh, then what other option you have? Uh, I always recommend them if you find chamomile that is something that very expensive, either you choose other more affordable oil or you even can explore chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is very easy to assess, right? And by drinking the tea, uh, it also can give you the kind of calming effect and it can help you sleep well too. Okay, let's see then on the right hand side, uh, these two flora. The first one here is carry sage, uh, purple in color, but this is not lavender, this is carry sage. And the bottom one is geranium. Uh, often people like to blend this oil together and use to help to regulate and relieve females complain related to hormone imbalance. We all female have a lot of issues, especially hormone thingy. Uh, later, it affects our menstrual cycles, later menopause, pre-menopause, uh, or maybe that uh, pregnancy, postnatal, you know, all different things related to hormone. So this two flora essential oil actually is good addressing uh, hormonal imbalance for female. And uh, always use in uh, those stress and anxiety related to female in uh, hormone imbalance matters. Now we talk about lavender. Everybody will know lavender. It's so common in the market, right? And uh, we don't talk about the essential oil. We talk about fragrance also have lavender. We talk about shampoo also got lavender fragrance. We talk about lotion in the commercial product also have lavender. It is so common. People know, know about uh, how lavender smell and people also you simply do a survey ask everybody people will know that ah this is 
something like a multi-purpose essential oil. It can help you to release tension, help you uh, sleep well. And uh, even if you have a skincare problem like pimples, uh, adolescent, uh, you know, puberty age that uh, they have a lot of pimples you can use in skincare. Uh, you can use to uh, purify in the room. Uh, everything is lavender. Okay. Uh, but when you buy lavender, it must be very cautious. Okay. We always say that when you buy essential oil, always check their scientific name. This is a scientific name. If a seller of essential oil could not tell you that what is their scientific name for the plant, then usually uh, this might not be pure oil. It can be a fragrance, artificial or synthetic fragrance. So when we come to this aromatherapy, we hope that we use something natural. We don't want to end up with spend a lot of money and buying something that is not pure. And some might even contain other chemicals that harm to you. Okay, and of course, lavender, there are also many, many species. Uh, usually, this species is a common one we use in aromatherapy. We also have lavendin. We also have Storches lavender. We also have Bulgaria lavender. There is so many, many types. But when you buy that time, just cautious, look for Lavendula augustifolia. Uh, and Bulgaria lavender, uh, they have this species too, but most of the feedback that we get from, it also have delivered the same function, but most of the uh, user that who use Bulgaria lavender, they find it that they don't like the scent because the scent is a bit different from the common one. Uh, we know that plants at different uh, countries or different region, uh, it, it has, when they, the plant grow in the region, the chemical, uh, the so-called the organic chemical compounds in the plant might be different. So actually it will affect the scent as well. So even that you find the right species, okay, and it's safe pure oil, try to smell it. Uh, we can have company A have lavender, company B have lavender, and maybe both are reputable, both are pure oil. Then you try out to, to smell it first, which one that you like. Then you pick the one that you, you like. Okay. Then we have mandarin oil here. Okay. Mandarin also one of the citrus essential oil. Okay. Traditionally, actually, it used a lot in Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine and it actually soothes the mind and the body, okay? Uh, lemon, we know very well. Lemon have the sharp and refreshing, and when you sniff it, you suddenly that become like wow, very uplifting, right? But mandarin, uh, it do not have the kind of lemon sharpness, but it brings a bit sweetness inside, and the sweet scent in the mand uh, mandarin essential oil uh, can help induce a sense of sleepiness when we inhale. So this is also a good option. Uh, we can use it. And this is another type, uh, essential oil, olibanum. Uh, the common name here, I believe a lot of people hear before, frankincense. Uh, uh, olibanum is another name. Uh, it also has a lot of different types of species. Okay, uh, Different types of species have different types of uh, benefits. Okay, So this has that kind of exotic, uh, fresh, sweet, balsamic uh, note, okay? Uh, and of course, frankincense essential oil is something that's not cheap. And some people will say that they don't like the essential oil, uh, frankincense essential oil scent. They rather prefer to use this. You can see from the screen, right? From my screen, this is the raisin. Raisin, uh, frankincense raisin. So they will buy a wax burner and put this raisin on the wax burner and let it melt. And then this aroma will come out and it is very uh, uh, nice and calming effect. And it is best known for its enduring emotion and spiritual support. Okay. And we have another one, sweet marjoram. Okay. You will be, you won't be surprised that uh, people will find some people, I think majority of people, because they are so used to lavender and actually they don't like lavender scent. So usually what I will recommend that for you, for those guys that who don't like lavender, you can try sweet marjoram. Actually, both of them almost have the same effect and same benefit. Okay. Uh, and if you have suffer for sleepness issue, uh, this oil you also can use. Uh, if you feel like 
you having an agitation or raising mind uh, or stress related condition, uh, this is a good essential oil that you can pick to use. And this is quite affordable price. And the last two uh, I will show here is one is the vertebral oil. Uh, and you can see this is really extract from the root from the plant. And this is a very common uh, essential oil, uh, where a common plant that we uh, plant in Indonesia uh, or some other region, uh, those hot weather, hot like weather like us. In fact, that in our country, we also can plant vertebral plant. It's look like the lalang. You know, if you see the plant, it actually you, you would thought that it's a lalang along the roadside, but actually this is vertebral. It has the uh, very comforting and grounding uh, effect. So we can use that. But some of the people don't like the vertebral scent. It has the red soil uh, scent and woody, the kind of woody note. Uh, but if you are so used to uh, Chinese meds, um, Chinese herbs, or, or those like uh, if you are, you are so used to different herbs, then you may, you will reject this kind of scent. It will feel very nice. And last, uh, I want to introduce here is Ilang Ilang. Uh, Ilang Ilang means flower of flower. Okay, this is uh, this plant is a lot in Indonesia. It is a natural antidepressant, and you if you have suffered any uh, um, anger, you know, and you want to change your mood, you can always use Ilang Ilang, uh, and and it can help in if you have any depression, sadness, fear, you can use it. But I I always say that. Uh, not everybody like this scent. You need to try yourself. And if you use this one too high dose, too concentration, uh, maybe that you may not enjoy the scent. You will feel headache. So for this Ilang Ilang, we always use in very, very low dose. Maybe one drop in 5 ml uh, carrier oil is good enough. Okay. And of course, there are other variable essential oil. We have cedar wood. If you want to go for mentally and spiritual warming, we have benzoin, cypress, lemon. Lemon is more on my booster. Usually, we use in daytime. We do. We, we hardly use lemon in nighttime because later you can't sleep because it's really refreshing, uplifting. And we have lemon glass. Uh, lemon glass enhance concentration. Uh, and alert and clear mind and also we try to use in daytime because we don't want at night time we are very alert and we can't we can't sleep and we have narrowly we have rose uh, rose is very very expensive as i mentioned it can be cost you uh, 700 to 800 ringgit for only 5 ml so uh, if you can afford okay but if you can't afford then go for those affordable oils you already can get the same outcome okay and we have rosemary. Uh, rosemary usually used at daytime. Okay, now we, we will, I will share that how do we use, okay, no complication. When we talk about essential oil, basically we are talking about two, uh, two methods of using. One is through your nose, inhalation. So either you do inhalation or you do diffusion. Second, uh, you will do topical, apply on your skin. Then this one is more for massage application. So when we talk about inhalation here, this approach are more at the personal level, okay? For you alone, you don't do it in environment, in the room, uh, your next, people next to you won't smell it. This is only yourself, right? The most economic way, I will prefer to recommend you to use this inhaler stick. This is, you can easily get uh, in, in Shopee's, you know, and you have the wig inside. All you need to do is just drop the essential oil in the wig and you insert it back. So you use it whenever you need it. When you feel stressed, maybe that you take it out and you just inhale deep breath. So maybe 10 or 15 seconds is good enough. Then use as you need it. Okay, of course, some people will say that, oh, today I'm stressed, I want to do a facial steamer. So they add essential oil, then they steam the face, the aroma come out. Okay, uh, but not everyone have the facial steamer at home. I will still feel that this is, the inhaler will still the best uh, economic way and easy to use. And overseas, they have weight pam. I'm not going to go in depth on it because this is a lot of debating on in overseas. Uh, they... Some questioning, uh, questionable about safety uh, because this 
the way of application is just like you are like sucking, uh, uh, having a cigarettes. So this is not appear in Malaysian market. So I'm fine. I will skip. And uh, another way, if you don't even want to buy an inhaler stick, so you can do a simple drop the essential oil on your handkerchief. So maybe you can put in the pockets. So let the sands come out by itself slowly and you can have the nice sand. Then will help you. Of course, you need to be careful. Some essential oil uh, has color. Like say, vegetable oil is dark brown. So it may stain your handkerchief. Or you can buy an aroma jewelry. Uh, inside, there is a cotton pad inside. You just drop the essential oil you want here. Then you wear it. And this is the aroma patch. Overseas in UK and in uh, Europe country, uh, at US, uh, this one used a lot in hospital setup. Uh, those aroma therapies that work in hospital, uh, they will use this aroma patch. It is a small patch where inside is already contained uh, essential oil. Once you peel off, you just stick on your clothes. Then the, the scent will come out from the button, from the button, and you can get the smell. And some people who like art and craft works, they will like to make their own natural fragrance. Okay, you can pick that which essential oil you like and the function that you want. Then you can mix uh, and make a natural fragrance. Then you can carry along the way. So whenever you need it, you just spray. Then you get the scent uh, of it and you enjoy the, the nice moment, calming moment. Okay, for the environmental, like today we can't go out, right? Every day stay at home, so because we worry the COVID situation outside so many cases. So we stay at home or in the room. So what you can consider to use is electric diffuser. Okay, this is the most common one people will buy uh, and, and diffuse, just drop uh, uh, whatever essential oil that you want and just diffuse it. And we always recommend that you do it for one hour, then you stop. Then maybe that you open your window, uh, open your door, let the air ventilation uh, go through well, and that, then you only start again. Don't continuously diffuse the whole day. Okay, actually it costs more harm than bringing the benefit. Okay, and uh, aroma lamp, I guess is not uh, so popular in Ma uh, Malaysia here, uh, which they use candle and we always worry that caught fire later, right? After if you fall asleep, then you forgot to uh, uh, prepare this, then it may be caused cause by uh, cause a fire at the home. Uh, but usually people still use electric diffuser. And you also can use wax warmer. Uh, wax warmer means that you just drop uh, on essential oil on the plate here. Then this electrical uh, wax warmer give the heat and the sense will evaporate. Or people like just like I mentioned just now, like frankincense, some people don't like to use essential oils. They buy this resin. But I guess in Malaysia here, it's very difficult to find. Uh, this is also, I asked my friends that to import some samples for me. This, once they put on the wax burner, uh, and this will melt with the heat, then the nice sense will come out. Uh, or the economic way, we just drop on the cotton pad. So maybe you leave the cotton pad beside your pillow, then you can get the sand. Uh, some some DIY uh, DIY uh, workshop also teach you to do a terracotta, you know, terracotta this, there are different nice more. So what you need that is just drop the essential oil on the terracotta, then the sand will come out. But for essential oil, usually I don't recommend with this user because we've been trying many times. The sand is not enough for a certain space. Uh, the best one is still use electric diffuser. Usually this is for more fragrance oil, but uh, when we come to uh, natural, uh, we want to go for natural things, we don't want chemical things, so we don't use fragrance oils. But if you use essential oil, then there's, so you put in everything, but the sense doesn't seem that like can disperse out evenly, or you, sometimes you not even can detect the scent. So it's kind of ways of using essential oil, using this uh, with diffuser method. Okay, so other than inhale, what else? What other application that we can use? Uh, we can use essential oil, dilute in carrier oil. What is carrier oil? Carrier oil that you can find uh, 
uh, carrier oil are some are vegetables oil. Uh, we can use fraction coconut oil. Uh, we can use sweet almond oil or even jojoba oil. So you dilute the essential oil. We don't use pure essential oil direct on your skin. Okay. Uh, once you dilute, then you it become a bottle of massage oil. Then you can gently massage. Uh, we don't usually aromatherapy. We don't do that kind of twin. Uh, you know, very hard acupuncture point. We don't. We don't do that. Uh, just gentle touch, massage. Let the oil absorb in your body, and the essential oil properties actually will go into your bloodstream. So you know, then it will bring the benefits for you. Okay, and of course. Uh, today that COVID situation, we can't go out, we can't go for massage center. Maybe we can prepare the oil, ask your family members to help you gentle massage. Or even you tell Joey, I don't have anyone at home can help me massage. Then we go for simple one. Uh, I always recommend, then maybe you prepare the massage oil, do hand massage. Nobody massage for you also, never mind. You can do it yourself. So maybe you can rub your hand about five minutes and the scent is on your hand. You can sniff, deep breath. This will help to calm you down. And this is very easy to apply. And most of the, uh, th this one I learned from one of the very famous advocate uh, aromatherapists in clinical setup. They do this a lot in the hospital setup. They help the patients to massage hands and, and let them uh, release their stress and anxiety. And of course, if you want to use in bath, also can. Same thing, everything make it very simple. Uh, some books very complicated. I, I, uh, Joey style is always look for simple, economic way to do it. Just do the same. Dilute the essential oil in a carrier oil. Okay, then you have one bottle. Whether you want to use for massage, also can. Whether you want to use for bath, also can. So if you have the bathtub, then you put the water, then you use this oil pour into your water and maybe that you want to uh, in the uh, like a body spa for about 10 minutes uh, or 15 minutes then it's good it will help you to relax okay uh, but please don't use pure essential oil direct drop in the into the water the oil and uh, the essential oil and water they cannot mix so if you go into the water then this pure essential oil may go direct on your skin. But when you dilute in the carrier oil, the carrier oil is on your skin. It's okay. So it won't direct harm your skin. Okay. And maybe you say that, ah, Malaysia house, ah, ah, where got the bathtub at home, right? So you can do a simple one. Just take a peel of water, right? You can do a foot bath. This also can help. So after all, you can see aromatherapy is not something difficult to, to practice, right? It's very simple. No need to go and see the reference book. I must buy this. I must buy that. Then I only can enjoy. No, we can go a very simple format to use it. Okay, these are the example for a formula ready to use. Uh, as you can see, if you want a stress relief, maybe you pick the oil that you want. Of course, here looks complicated, right? I must choose bergamot, vertiver, then chamomile, two types of more, geranium, lavender. Then mix, 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 mix get one bottle, okay? Uh, but for Joey style, it's very simple. First, you need to try which one you like the scent. Second, you decide you want to use on daytime or nighttime. If you want to use in daytime, maybe you can uh, add those citrus-based one, which is more uplifting, don't you? So it will help you that not really feel tired uh, every time or sleepiness. It, it really like boosts your mind in the daytime. But if you want to use for night, then you don't go for those citrus. You can use uh, those more calming ones, sedative types like flora, uh, uh, those flora essential oil, and then you use at the nighttime. Then when you want to do formula, very simple, uh, pick one or two. Three, three is good enough. Unless that you are very well versed in aromatherapy, so you, you, you already uh, have doing some times already, then you can do something formula like this complicated one. But usually you use two to three is enough. But most important, whatever you mix in, the scent must be nice to you. If the scent is not nice to you, you may not like it. Then how would you use it to release your stress? The moment every time you smell something that you don't like, right? So whenever you mix it, uh, it's always recommend that after you mix, you shake the bottle, then you let it sit for about eight hours, let it blend well, synergize well. So this bottle is your own formulation. 
So you just use whatever you need. If you want to drop uh, one to three drops in cotton ball, also can. You want to drop in the smell strips or inhaler stick, also can. Or you want to diffuse, also can. But if when you want to apply on skin, whether using for bath or massage, always use with carrier oil. Okay. And uh, usually books will tell you high concentration. Okay. High concentration, they can up to 3% to 5%. But let's say uh, for for people who have illness or who people are new to aromatherapy, we always encourage low dosage. 1% or below 1% is good enough. So how do we calculate? It's very simple. Uh, I guess everybody have this medicine cup at home, right? Uh, if you have children, you know, uh, when you buy the medicine, they have the medicine cup. Uh, this one medicine cup is 15 ml. Uh, one third of it is 5 ml. So you just need to pour 5 ml of the carrier oil being a sweet almond oil, jojoba oil or whatever, whatever. But uh, usually we don't use virgin coconut oil because virgin coconut oil by itself has a very strong smell. So it will cover your essential oil scent. So usually we use fraction coconut oil. So you just drop one drop in 5 ml. That's it. Let's call 1%. Okay. Uh, if let's say you want to use uh, something like this, you want to prepare an oil for aroma massage and you want to follow, you say, Joey, I want to follow this formula. Uh, one drop of bergamot, one drop of lavender and one drop of frankincense. Okay, one, one, one. So now it's already three drops. So it's very simple max calculation. Uh, one drops for 5 ml means 1%, right? So this is one, one, one. So I dilute in 15 ml, 15 ml carrier oil. So this is already ready for massage oil. So we always say that we don't, uh, usually we don't prepare in big volume, so small volume. Then maybe you, after you use, you finish already, and when you want to change the scent, then you can redo it again. Uh, of course, here, the coming, we have coming formulas, same thing, whatever that you blend in, then mix with carrier oil for massage. If you use direct in the electrical diffusion, that is very simple. You just drop whatever, uh, usually four to six drop in the diffuser is good enough to, to diffuse in the room. So these are the different formulas just as a reference for you. And last but not least, remember that essential oil alone are not likely to relieve your stress and anxiety. You must combine with other things, right? Let's say you can choose meditation, social support, exercise, uh, and of course, good sleep is very important, okay? But if you have been continuously struggling with symptoms, uh, I would still strongly suggest please visit a doctor or mental health practitioner uh, for diagnosis and treatment. Aromatherapy is just a complementary and alternative for you to help you to relieve the symptoms. Thank you. That's all my presentations. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Joey. Uh, here I have some questions. Where can we purchase the frankincense resin? Uh, unfortunately, now that it's so difficult to find in Malaysia, usually uh, you might want to look for those certified aromatherapies. They might have channel that to import in the resin. Uh, so far, I only see one of uh, one of the seller in Tropicana, if not mistaken. Uh, it has the selling the different type of resin, including frankincense, myrrh, uh, different types of resin. And how do we identify the oil is genuine or not synthetic? Okay, uh, usually when we buy essential oil uh, for Malaysia context, right? Uh, because Malaysia, the aromatherapy thing is really driven by MLM company at the beginning. So slowly now the market that getting more and more players coming in. So normally I will ask a uh, user to look for big company. So usually those big company, their products are more reliable. But of course, if you go for MLM, then you have to prepare to pay the price, the, 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 the pricey price, right? Uh, and if you want to choose something like a non-MLM product, which are good and reputable one, uh, you can go for uh, plant therapy, or Sadi or Eden Botanical. These have been present in the market very long time and it's very famous in uh, US. So these are more reputable. Uh, or you can find uh, your familiar certified aromatherapies. Uh, they can get the source, uh, which is more genuine uh, and definitely is pure oil, uh, which, more, uh, which is more affordable price. 
Okay. And uh, which type of lotion or career oil is recommended for flay, uh, face uh, application? Okay. For general, okay, whoever also can use one, we always say jojoba oil. Jojoba is the best oil that to suit every type of skin. Uh, or you can try sweet almond oil or grape seed oil. These are more refreshing and it, it won't be have the kind of sticky feel. Uh, but if let's say your skin is very dry, then maybe that you can explore other types of carrier oil like macadamia oil, but use in very low dose. Macadamia oil is very sticky uh, or... Uh, but we don't use uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil is too thick for us. Sometimes you see in internet, there's a lot of recipes in overseas. They will ask uh, to use coconut as uh, co uh, those virgin coconut oil or coconut oil as a carrier oil. But to our weather, actually, it's not suitable. It will clog our, our pores. Uh, and if you want to use, really use, uh, then go for fraction coconut oil. But the rest, other at other of it for general, jojoba is still the best option to choose. Okay. And uh, okay, I have bought a jasmine essential oil from Tanamera. Is it good and safe to use? Okay, uh, jasmine oil is a very, very expensive oil. Uh, I'm not so familiar with this Tanamera oil uh, because uh, this is a local brand. Uh, and uh, usually how we judge that whether it's uh, reliable. One, we, we will see from the pricing by itself. Jasmine oil definitely is very expensive. If it sell until very cheap, uh, either is the oil is already been diluted in a carrier oil, which is still safe to use, or if it's not diluted, and they tell you it's a pure oil and sell at very cheap price, then definitely it's not genuine. So this is normally how we judge. And of course, when you see the packaging, it definitely must give you the scientific name. And in overseas practice, usually we can ask the seller that uh, can they provide the GCMS report, which is a chemical analysis report. And most of the genuine essential oil seller, they can give you. But unfortunately, in Malaysia here, uh, this it is very hard that to ask a GCMS report from the seller. So sometimes that's why I always say that though that I sometimes I'm a bit skeptical on on those big MLM company, but somehow I would say that if compared with the other oil that in the market, they are still considered more uh, safe compared with those unknown brand in the market, uh, especially local brand, because they just import and you do not know where is the source coming from. And okay. Uh, can this aroma, the next question, can this aromatherapy induce our hormone uh, and cause cancer? Okay, uh, aromatherapy, when we say that how it uh, helps in our hormone imbalance, it don't, it don't act like a hormone. Actually, it, it is a, a, a substance that regulates. So regulate means that it, it won't necessarily that, uh, regulate more. It gives that kind of balancing. So uh, can... Uh, produce, uh, can, can it cause cancer? Of course, when we talk about aromatherapy, we always use uh, safety dosage. Okay, everything, everything actually in our lifestyle here, even that uh, if you use a lot of shampoos, we contain a lot of fragrance oils, people also will say they can cause cancer. Everything, but everything come to how to control the safety dose. Everything depends on how much you dilute, how frequent you use. Uh, this will be try to control. Uh, even the medicine that which is very good for health or something good for health, we also don't, we don't take a lot. We take at the right safety dose. So everything still go back to the dosage. And actually, if you use below 1% or max 1%, especially for those who have illness, actually it's quite safe to use. Can I interrupt there? Joey? Yes. Um, yeah. I think if you have any doubts about aromatherapy when you're going through your treatment, or if you're worried about the hormone imbalance, uh, mm. speak to the doctor who is treating you for breast cancer so that you can be clear about it, whether mm. you can use aromatherapy or not. Secondly, yeah. aromatherapy is being used for you to inhale. Mm. It is used for you to apply on your skin. As long as you're not drinking it, anything you take by your mouth mm. can make changes in your body inside yeah. in terms of the chemical changes, enzymatic changes, and hormone changes. Mm. Anything that you apply on your skin or you breathe in through your nose, 
what Joey had shown earlier is that when you breathe or when it comes on your skin, your, your, your senses actually send the sensation to your brain. Mm. And then your brain reacts or responds with a calming effect or a refreshing effect or a mood change effect. So that's what is happening. It is not changing anything inside your body chemically. So you need to make sure that you are not um, misunderstanding this. This is not a um, medical treatment. This is not a medicine. It is actually a complementary therapy that helps to calm you down, helps to reduce some side, side effects that you're facing, some mood changes that you're facing. It is not a tablet that you take through your mouth. So if you really have doubts and issues, speak to your attending doctors. Yes, thank you. Thank you for answering. Okay, uh, is that correct? Breast cancer survivors should not go for massage, uh, not steam bath or spa. Uh, this one usually that... Uh, I'll take this question. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'll to take this question. Is that correct? Breast cancer survivors should not go for massage or steam bath mm. and spa. If mm. you had your breast cancer on the left side, we have informed you earlier, do not allow for deep massage, very hard massage on mm. your breast area, which was removed, on your shoulder area, on your upper arm, and mm. on the back of your shoulder. This is because if you have had your lymph nodes removed from your armpit, then what will happen is that the lymphatic circulation in that area is much reduced and it can cause blockage. That's the reason why we tell you do not allow for hard and deep massage in that area. What Joey was talking about was very light massage on you. Very light massage will not cause any, like she had very clearly stated, do not, they do not use aromatherapy to do deep massage, pressing hard, use too much pressure or even acute pressure. They don't use it for that. It is very light. It's a, it's a sensational feeling that you feel calm or you, you might even go off to sleep. I know that when I used to go for my facial, they used to use um, chamomile tea, chamomile uh, aromatherapy in the diffuser. And it used to just make me fall off to sleep within five minutes. <laughs> when the facial was over, they wake me up and I said, are you sure you did my facial because I was sleeping? So it's really very calming. I mean, th that's what we are talking about here. And um, the other thing is hot steam bath. So what she mentioned was not hot, hot, hot water. Okay, you take, a, you take water that is warm. Uh, we should not take highly hot water onto that arm area where we've had our surgery because it is numb. You can feel a numbness compared to the other side. You can feel that your sensation on your arm area and your armpit and your breast area, which was removed, is different from your other side. It is, you don't feel the finer, finer sensation, okay? And the other thing is spa, of course. Uh, when you talk about spa, we talk about spa, like for example, in a steam bath where it is really, really hot. That's where you avoid it. Uh, that's what we are talking about. So uh, breast cancer survivor can go for massage. The rest of the body can be massaged hard if you want, but only the area where the breast cancer was treated that area plus the back of your shoulder, plus the upper part of your arm, your armpit, your, your, your whole breast front chest area where the breast was removed or part of the breast was removed. That's where you do not allow hard massage. Soft massage, yes. Superficial massage, yes. Over to you, Joey. Thank you. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, is it EO edible? Okay, if you look at the US practice, uh, you can you, you might be here before the Naha, the IFA from UK. Uh, all of us do not recommend ingest essential oil. Uh, I know that in Malaysia here, because our aromatherapy very much driven by MLM company, and some even recommend you to drop the essential oil in the water to drink. It is a no no thingy. Okay, uh, whatever they claim that is food grade, whatever, we, we cannot prove that. There is no document to prove that. And also there is no clinical study. Uh, but they will tell you that it might be a, a French style, uh, uh, French doctor, they use it. Even in France, they use it 
uh, injections, but it's with the supervision with doctors. So in Malaysia here, none of us, even a medical line person, none of us are qualified that to advise or consult patient to ingest uh, essential oil. So please, please don't ingest in, uh, the essential oil. Okay. Uh, are they certain essential oil? The next question, are they certain essential oil that cannot be mixed together? Uh, so far, as long that those common uh, common range actually is quite safe that to mix together. Uh, and when we mix, it's very dose, uh, low dosage. And when it dilute with carrier oil, it is safe to use. And when uh, we always say that for uh, especially for cancer patients, uh, in UK practice, clinical practice, it always maximum dose is 1%. And in, just now we mentioned 1% is 5 ml in one drop. That is the maximum dose. So it means that it will be add more carrier oil to dilute in. So it's less than 1%. And uh, like our president mentioned, a lot of times that for uh, patient with illness, we don't want to have those complications with their medicine, everything. So uh, low dose is very safe and mainly used for inhale and soft touch and not that kind of hard press massage. Okay, uh, okay. another question here. Will EO like Calisage and Ylang Ylang disturb our female hormone which cause breast cancer recurrence? Uh, so far, there is no clinical study for that. In fact, that I have read one clinical study which mentioned Calisage when they use the inside the chemical constitution uh, in the in vitro, in vitro, uh, it's not a um, human, in vitro test actually can suppress the breast cancer cell. But this is not enough, uh, statistically, it's still not enough data that to prove that it works. So uh, as long as everything, again, the reminder for safety, don't use high dosage. And uh, it. Uh, some people will tell you like carrier stage, like ylang, ylang, uh, um, act like a hormone. Actually, it, it is not a hormone. It just regulate your body balancing. Okay. Uh, are expired essential oil we still smell good and safe to use? Uh, usually, I know uh, everyone spend a lot of money buying expensive essential oil, but sometimes we can't finish, right? So normally, uh, we won't recommend you to use expired essential oil. So what I will uh, advise that you perhaps that you maybe can add in your household product, like maybe use for cleaning, mopping, or maybe that uh, you do uh, diffuser, uh, uh, not use for diffuser, but let's say, uh, something that you put in the cabinet, you know, to clean the scents, uh, uh, give the good smell in your cabinet, but don't use for yourself. Those expired essential oil, don't give, use on your skin uh, and don't inhale. Okay. Uh, okay, someone asked me, repeat the name of reputable company selling EO. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe you can try plant therapy, uh, Osadi. Uh, Eden Botanica, these are non-MLM and the price are quite uh, quite okay. It's not too extreme, not the MLM price. Or if you are already in the MLM companies that their product is also not bad, it's just that more expensive. Okay, uh, where we can find reputable clinical aroma therapies. There are few uh, in uh, Malaysia here, uh, mainly they doing the education, teaching aroma therapy course. Those are good clinical aroma therapies. Uh, you can, uh, and you can find that uh, those people, if let's say have NAHA certificate or have CFA uh, certified aroma therapies, uh, those they are being trained. Uh, and now, uh, if let's say you see those people who claim they are NAHA aroma therapies, then you have to ask them: Are they a clinical NAHA or it just a NAHA level one or level two? So usually you can easily quite find in the internet. Uh, to find those clin uh, clinical aroma therapies. Okay. Uh, okay. It, okay. Some uh, will tell that some products will claim uh, TFPA or US certified is good enough or, or CPTG uh, certified pure tested grade essential oil is good. Uh, hmm, okay. This is a very sensitive question to ask. In fact, that CPTG uh, this is something claimed by the company by itself, uh, doTERRA by itself. So uh, I will still advise that look for aromatherapies. 
uh, clinic uh, certified aromatherapist, they would advise you that which essential oil is good. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are too many bodies that uh, uh, yeah. claim claim this and claim that. Uh, but I would say that uh, those uh, claim that you see those companies who claim it, at least their product so far uh, in our eye, aromatherapy's eye, that is still safe to use, those big brands. Uh, okay. Uh, and okay, okay. Uh, I saw someone write back the Jasmine Oil Temp and L cost 55. Uh, Okay, uh, okay, it tells you it's already dilution. That's that's why that is uh, the price is cheap. Uh, first thing when we see jasmine oil, definitely it won't cost 55. It would definitely cost uh, very high. But I saw it right here, 3% dilution in jojoba oil. Uh, okay, uh, genuine. Uh, at least it's already tell you it's in dilution. So you can see even 3% 3, 3 I believe that you smell the scent before right it is still very strong right if you feel very strong you still can dilute further to use jasmine are very strong powerful scent so actually very little is good enough mm. are there any essential oil not suitable for cancer survivors uh okay uh in UK practice uh, actually they, they those use in clinical setup uh, regardless that whether they have any uh, cancers, different types of cancers or whatever, uh, it's more on using on the emotion side uh, to tackle their stress, anxiety, and uh, the kind of feel of uh, uh, touch. Uh, and so as long as the dosage is not higher than 1%, uh, and you do it intermittent, you don't use one oil continuously for a very long period, you change, actually it's okay. Uh, if it, it is okay that to use different oil for, for any patient. Uh, any else questions? Uh, no, no questions. I just wanted to add a little bit to what Joey just mentioned. I mm -hmm. think uh, what most, pa most patients may be worried about is there is usually a list of herbs that cannot be used when they, they're going for chemotherapy or even surgery. Now uh -huh. that 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 list is actually if you're taking it as part of a drink or part of a food or something that you're eating you're putting into your mouth okay not something that you apply on your skin it will not interact with the with your treatment if you're applying it on your skin or you're breathing it in so it will not uh, give you any problem you have to make it very clear if you want to clarify with your doctor whether you can do the aromatherapy because the doctor may get the wrong message that you're trying to eat it or drink it so you need to say that I want to go do aromatherapy where I just smell it and or also I just apply it on my skin, but I don't take it through my mouth. So you got to make it very clear. Uh, and uh, certainly if you are applying something on your skin, it doesn't go into your body and make any changes to your enzymes or to your chemicals or to your, your, your hormone levels. It doesn't do that. If somebody is having a migraine because of their periods or their menstruation, it is probably the essential oil is going to help in the migraine, which is a side effect. It, it will not help in the periods part. Mm -hmm. So you got to you got to remember what Joey mentioned. She said that it does not give treatment, medical treatment. So you need to understand that just like you drink coffee when you're feeling sleepy. All right. You feel good about it. It's something like that. But you're not drinking. You're not drinking this thing. You're just smelling it or you're just applying it on your skin. We have a barrage of questions, you know, we have, is rose hip oil uh, suitable to use as a carrier oil for facial? Uh, yes, yes, rose hip oil is suitable. Some people like to use rose hip oil for wrinkles, you know, uh, it can be used as a carrier oil for facial. Joey, um, I, I was, there were many questions about where do, to get these things where to to find uh, credible sources of uh, sale of such items and to be sure that you're not being cheated. Do, <laughs> do you offer such services? Uh, so far, we don't sell, but we do more on the education side. Uh, you can find uh, uh, some DIY shop uh, who sell the uh, raw materials, especially nowadays that there are a lot of workshops for uh, self-made skincare products. They are uh, carrier oil they sell are actually a good grade or you can go for those organic shop to look for it. So they, they sell the nice career oil. 
So mm. organic shops would be one of the more credible places where you can actually find such things uh, and also get advice as well. What Joey has given us today is really, really very useful, something we've been looking for. So we have a lot of thank you notes to you, Joey. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> We certainly have people who are very happy about the whole session. Uh, and we will then use that to thank Joey Tio, who has been very helpful in educating us when it comes to aromatherapy. I hope you enjoyed the session and I hope it was useful to all of you. And let's, let's give Joey a big hand. Thank you very much. So thank you, Joey. Thank you to everyone for watching uh, this session.